giving a brief about the organization. So it is InfoSec Train, and we claim that we are one of the finest security technology training and consulting organization. Uh, we were founded in 2016. We have a pretty decent and pretty robust team of experienced industry professionals with over 15 years of experience into training, into consulting, into certifications in the field of information technology and cybersecurity, right? And uh, like I said, uh, today's topic is more concerned in terms of cloud. So when we talk about cloud, there are there are a lot of myths and there are a lot of realities, right? So we, we talk about all those reality checks. We talk, talk about all those myths that are out there. But uh, to put it in very simple terms, if I talk about cloud, it is simply accessing all those IT services that we talk about. So when you can access all those IT services over the internet, right, where you can, uh, you know, probably people say that, you know, we might not be using cloud that much. We might not, uh, you know, we have not used cloud from that perspective. But at the end of the day, almost all of us are Gmail users. If not Gmail, we have iPhones, we have iTunes, you know, we use all those Android phones. So, you know, once you're, you now want to switch your Android phone, uh, you, it's, it's very easy for us, right? We can simply buy a new one. You put your mail ID in there and all your data gets back to your mobile, right? So where exactly that all that data was, all that data was there in the cloud. So again, to put it like that in very simple terms, when we talk about cloud, it is about accessing all those IT services over the internet, fine. Now, moving on with this, you know, if I talk more in terms of cloud computing or why exactly, uh, you know, you see this all, all this trend out in the market where people are talking in terms of cloud, everyone is fancying cloud as of now. So the primary thing is, it's pretty easy to access. We can access it simply over the internet, right? It gives you an on-demand computing service, whatever you want, you know, as per your requirement, let that be storage, let that be a server, let that be a database, let that be any application that you are after, right? That let that be a mobile app that, that you want to build or a platform that you need for that. All those things could actually be given to you on demand and all that computation you want, you can actually get it. From that perspective, you get everything you need from storage where you can simply go ahead and put your files to all the processing power that you need in order to process your particular jobs, right? Cool part here is it also gives you things like pay as you go service. So which is uh, actually sort of awesome, right? So awesome in terms of, uh, you know, if you want to get yourself a server, if you want to get yourself a system, right? You can simply pay for the time you need that particular machine or that particular system. And then you can simply go ahead and you can terminate that particular instance and you will be charged for all the time that you have used it, right? Different, we have different charging methods. So it is pay per second, pay per hour. It depends from service to service that we are actually opting for, right? And again, when we talk about cloud, we have multiple service provider right now out there. So we have AWS, one of the leading ones. We have Azure, we have Google Cloud. So we basically have all these service providers out there. Now, as I said, primarily today, we will be talking in terms of AWS, right? So things in terms of, you know, how you, how you guys are gonna go or, uh, you know, hit for AWS Architect Associate exam or primarily this webinar is more focused on AWS Security Speciality exam, right? So right now, again, coming to that, there are more benefits that we talk in terms of cloud. So it is cheap, right? Uh, some of you might wonder uh, the moment I, I use the word that using a cloud is cheap, but yes, it actually is, uh, you know, try try considering the fact that you get your own server for which, uh, you know, maybe a server might cost you less, but you need a space to put that server because it have a physical, uh, you know, thing which we have to place somewhere. And, you know, from, from all that perspective, what we can do, we can actually go ahead and we can grab things, right? So it is cheap, it is collaborative. Another cool part is it is up to date, whatever new updates are there, uh, you know, all those things, they are automatically fed to your things. Previously, if you go back uh, for any on-prem device, you, uh, you know, you need to raise a particular request where you can actually, uh, you know, update things or uh, you need a particular time frame where your systems will go under maintenance and then you go ahead and you try and upload, update those things, right? So uh, what it also gives you is it gives you 
proper up to date uh, talking about uh, like I said it is up to date it is also scalable it is reliable it is consistent uh, you know it is also eco-friendly right means uh, now you you don't really need all those papers and all those hard drives and all those ink that is to be wasted so you know a very very easy example for that would be you know we it actually eliminates a lot of waste right especially the one which comes out of all these things like hard drive paper and ink right so uh, again it is very much eco friendly as well it is very supportive it is pretty modern because everyone nowadays is talking in terms of cloud right so cloud is really uh, one of the fascinating subjects in the market as of now so you know it is also one of one of those modern terms and one more quick thing is it is also secure right now a lot of people have different arguments around secure so let me give you something it is secure by design that means if you talk about a raw cloud space yes it is designed in a way that it is supposed to be secure but when you take on a cloud and when you start putting your requirements to it your requirement in terms of your servers your databases your applications that might need a whole different layer of security and that is something again which we we are going to talk about later in the session now some of the cloud uh, features and characteristics which we get uh, in terms of aws as well as other cloud vendors so focusing more on aws we talk in terms of automation and orchestration so now it's not like all those uh, typical old days where you have to get yourself a vm uh, you know you need to make all those manual settings to it how much ram you want or you know run all those or select make all those choices from that perspective click on all that next and next and select all the places where you want to put it now they have made it pretty much simple for you right so it's just like one click away from you and you don't really have to worry about the compute it is a scalable can give you as much compute as you want it is cost management right so it also provide you cost management in terms of you know you as i told you you pay as you go right which is very much cost friendly as well we get good services in terms of performance monitoring storage networks applications compute all those things they come with it it helps you to maintain your compliance right compliance and governance in terms of risk assessments in terms of audits right so all those things now have been included in aws so when when we go ahead when we talk about aws or when we you know deep dive into this particular subject we study in there that how exactly we can maintain them how exactly we can do all these risk assessments all these threat analysis and all these sort of things and then one of the integral part like i was just saying security it comes by design when you go for a cloud so it gives you things like iam which is for identity and access management it gives you pretty good feature for encryption which is one of the core when it comes to security it gives you endpoint securities so it, it gives us a lot of features where we can actually talk about encrypting our data in terms of when it is in transit it talks a lot in terms of encrypting the data when it is at rest right so talking quickly in terms of what all service models we have and i think this would be pretty much casual for each and every one of you guys so we have saas paas and ias so talking in terms of saas it is your software as a service where uh, you know all of you are using your gmails your you know google docs google calendars all those things what you are getting is that is sort of a software as a service we move on to pass which is platform as a service uh, you know google gives you a platform where people can develop their own applications right and then we have infrastructure as a service uh, which things like aws and azure they give you you can call for your own infrastructure you can build it as you want right so uh, there is a very simple model to understand it means uh, personally me i'm i'm like foodie so uh, you know i prefer understanding things in terms of that even even back in the days when i had to remember all those seven layers of you know network i rather you know didn't went with data link physical and that sort of thing i rather went, went with please do not throw sausage pizza away right and again you can see on my screen something saying pizza as a service so again you know now you guys know that i fancy pizza so if on the on the very left hand side if we look at it that are all those traditional on prem solutions right where everything in terms of your hardware till your application whatever you have you have that on prem right so basically that is our traditional on prem solutions 
then we have infrastructure as a service so you know if i if i talk in terms of pizza so you know you have cheese you have toppings tomato sauce dough all those things that is something which is being managed by the vendor so basically if i talk technically that would be your you know virtualization your you know hardware requirement what all things are there all those things is being taken care of by the vendor itself right storage servers virtualization networking all those things is being taken care of by the vendor and then rest everything is up to you right means you have your own oven you can select your own dining place you know whatever additional things you want with it that's all yours so basically the operating system the runtime data application all those things are at your disposal and you can use it that gives you infrastructure as a service then we have platform as a service where only application and data is your right so like i said in platform as a service google gives you a platform where you can go ahead and you can code right you can code your own let's say apk's in terms of developing mobile apps so you can go ahead you can create your own apk you can bring in your own test data and you can play around with it but what you cannot change is you cannot change the back end operating system you cannot change the middleware you cannot change the runtime environment so basically only thing that you can play with is application and data that would be the top two layers here that would be like you know you can get your own uh, dining table you can get your own piece of beverage that you want but everything is being delivered to your doorstep right and then we have software as a service where you know we don't actually prefer doing anything on our own and we rather trust cloud based vendor for it so a simple example for that would be if you want to have a pizza why don't you go to your nearest pizza outlet right and just grab one so everything is being taken care by them from dining till cheese so you don't have to worry about anything out there and all that is taken care by the vendor itself right now when we talk in these terms uh, you know the cloud deployment model also comes into the picture where we talk about we have public clouds we have private clouds we have community clouds and then we have hybrid clouds right so public cloud being something which is publicly accessible right so there are a lot of public clouds out there which you guys are actually using which is out there for public anyone uh, you know who want to use it like the the whole netflix is actually running on aws right so you can think of it in that way then we have private clouds these are totally you know organization specific so let's say if i talk in terms of infosec train we are maintaining all of our stuff in here and we are using aws for it so which is totally for internal use none of that is to be shared with anyone outside infosec train so that means that belongs totally to us it is customer specific which makes it a public cloud now there are a couple of organizations so let's say there is for example there is let's say hcl right now uh, you know let's say infosec want to share some data with hcl and both of them are maintaining the same cloud right and that being your share of you can you are sharing that cloud amongst two of the vendors or you can share it amongst the community as well that makes it a community cloud and then comes your hybrid cloud which is like you know you combine any of these two models a public and a community one a public and a private one so that will end up giving you a hybrid cloud fine now talking in that perspectives you know nowadays cloud cloud means you know cloud is being uh, one of the craziest terms out there right so there are a lot of new things that are popping up there are a lot of information that is actually out there right in terms of what what exactly is happening and how exactly is happening in terms of what's new why exactly are we going for this uh, you guys might have heard couple of days back you know aws released their first apple instance right so, uh, you know before this whatever if you, if you wanted a mac instance on aws you couldn't really get it because it was not available but now it is all there on your aws as well right now uh, again talking in terms of what new in cloud almost 94% of the business uh, you know they claim that they saw an improvement from a security perspective as well after they switch to a cloud like i told you guys cloud have its own security by design so that is something which you will inherit once you switch your infrastructure to clouds it it makes it pretty easy uh, you know to meet any compliance requirements that you have because like if i talk about aws specifically aws helps you to maintain uh, fisma it helps you to maintain iso 27001 it helps you to maintain pci dss level 1 
So there are there are a lot of compliance standards which AWS helps you to maintain and it becomes really easy for you rather than doing all those configuration all by on your own when we are talking about on-prem solution. Now AWS assists you in terms of maintaining those compliances as well, right? Moving ahead, we have a lot of benefits that cloud computing have to business. Uh, like I was talking in the beginning, it is cost effective. It is flexible and reliable. It is easily upgradable. It gives us high productivity. It gives us a secure data storage. It is pretty easy to deploy, easy to manage. You can share the resources. It is highly automated and all these things they comes by default with the cloud right now. Think if you if you guys want to go back, think of a way that what if two of you wanted to you know, create a document and then you wanted to edit that particular document. It would be, you know, I'm creating a document in my laptop and then I send all the way across to you. You will review it. You will make any required changes. Right. So, you know, like I said, cloud helps you to also to share those resources. So now what you can do, you switch to things like, let's say Google Docs, right? So you are creating one of your documents at your place, right? And then what can happen there is, you know, whoever have to review it, he can simply open it on the Google Drive and both of you can actually edit that same document at the same time, right? So that is one of the things that it comes with cloud talking about secure data storage. That means whatever data you want to put in there, uh, you know, you can set your cloud to have encryption at rest. So uh, we will see, uh, you know, we study that bit a lot when we talk about AWS uh, security speciality. There is a whole dedicated module for that, which talks in terms of data protection or data encryption in which, uh, you know, encryption is playing a major role. If we talk about, you know, let's say we have a bucket, right? An S3 bucket, which is simply there for storing the data, right? Now, when I say it gives you secure data storage, that means I can simply make a rule for my bucket where any data that lands into my bucket, the moment it is landing into my bucket, that data will be encrypted, right? And you can set similar sort of rules over there on your bucket. You can even encrypt the data in transit when you are sending your data from, uh, you know, one place to another so that to make sure, you know, you have all that data transit as well as data storage being secured. Right. There is another term that comes into the picture which talks about resilience and it is it is again, you know, a pretty big term all on itself that, you know, when we talk about it, the very first term uh, was first thing that comes into my mind is how resilient your environment is right and resilient your environment means resiliency is basically the ability to handle any failures very gracefully right and to recover the whole system back to its normal state. Right. So talking in terms of AWS cloud, what we have, there are three basic techniques that comes with it, right? There are three basic techniques that comes with it. The very first one is checking and monitoring. Now, when we talk in terms of checking and monitoring, it point towards an independent process, which is talking about continuously reviewing the system, whether it is meeting a specification of any particular behavior or the technique or the key to detect any failures that might be happening. So what happens is, uh, let's say you created an architecture where you have like three or four instances of a server running in the background, right? And, you know, in order to communicate with it, so let's say your structure looks something like this. We have around three servers which are sitting in the back end and then you use something which is a load balancer in the picture, right? Anyone who assist this these particular server from the internet, they are not exactly accessing these servers. They are making this request to your load balancer and your load balancer will be redirecting this request toward any of those three servers which is available to take that particular request right now let's take a fact that one of these server is down during this whole process right so there came in a request and this particular server is down for that particular time what features comes with checking and monitoring is that this load balancer which is sitting there in the network what it does it automatically does a health check for every single server that is running in the back end, right? Because it is load balancers responsibility to redirect that request toward all those servers, right? So what feature it gives you? It gives you a constant health check, right? So it keeps on checking, it keeps on monitoring the health for all these systems running in the back end. And if any one of those servers or systems is, is down, what it does, it simply does not redirect request toward that particular system and it can actually alert you 
that this particular box is down if you want to uh, you know if you want to give it a look you can come here you can give it a look or you can also set it up to call a new instance for itself so basically it can also create a new instance which is similar to this one right and again it can use that particular instance for balancing all the load that is being sent across in the network right so th these are uh, some of or this is one of the ways how it can actually work or go around with checking and monitoring that is the very first thing next thing that we have is checkpoints and restart now it also becomes really important for us to have a checkpoint right or to uh, have a place in case of a disaster right or in case of there is uh, you know any incident that happened in our network right we might or we should be able to at least reach back to the nearest instance where everything was running fine, right? So that's why all these checkpoints and restarts are really important. How AWS maintains checkpointers? AWS creates AMI for itself. AWS creates snapshots, right? So I won't exactly use the term AMI here. I would rather use the term snapshot. So if I say checkpoint, checkpoint would be, uh, you know, moreover a snapshot for me which have been taken at a particular time, right? Or a particular state of that particular machine. Now, if there is an incident or if there is any disaster that might have happened, it will become really easy for us to restore to that latest correct checkpoint, right? So that is one of the second requirements that we have when we talk about resilience in terms of clouds, right? Then we have third one, which talks about redundancy and replication right now aws again gives you pretty decent features in terms of redundancy in terms of replication so it becomes really easy for us to distribute our systems or to call in any additional resources or to replicate same existing resources into multiple instances so that if there is any load coming toward my particular instance i can actually distribute it right so when we talk about redundancy and replication um, the very first thing or the question that comes to my mind is in terms of databases, right? So what AWS helps you to do, it helps you to create multiple replications of the same database so that some of them are like read-only instances where people, they can read data out of it, but they are not allowed to write anything into it, right? So basically it is one of, again, the important feature when it comes to resiliency or, or when, when we talk about how resilient your environment is, right? Now, talking a bit more into it, talking about AWS cloud security to be specific, right? So if you guys know, a bit about the history back in 2003 there were like these couple of um, you know amazon engineers who came up with an idea that you know why don't we share or why don't they they had a pretty good infra and they came up with an idea why don't we have something where we can automate certain set of services and we can share it with people right so again going back in 2003 and now talking in 2020 right it is it is a pretty decent time of journey and talking about that aws is now one of the world's largest cloud computing platform if i talk specifically about aws if you if you look at the stats for the recent quarter, AWS consists about almost 33% of the cloud computing market share, right? Which is almost, if you, if you combine the top three biggest competitors, right? It is even more than the market share those top three biggest competitors are having. AWS itself have it on its own. And that is why people are more interested and people are more, you know, bent towards learning AWS. Also to learn AWS in, in terms of security, because, you know, whenever a technology comes in, we are not talking in the era where security was sitting in the back seat. Right now, security is something which is actually driving the whole businesses. It is now sitting in the front seat and it have now taken up the hold. Right. So again, you know, when when AWS security, this whole things, it starts coming into the picture. There are a few pillars that we have to maintain. Right. So security comes with its own pillars. There are few. There, there are some of the security terminologies that you guys must be aware of. So I hope you guys understand when I use the word vulnerability. So vulnerability is a flaw or a weakness. We have exploit where we take advantage of that vulnerability. So what happens here is uh, if you guys might have heard, there was a very famous attack on one of the AWS based environments 
environment which goes by with the name capital one right so you guys if, if you guys don't know about it you guys should give it a definite research it was a pretty interesting attack and again in order to secure our environments right in order to secure our infrastructures from any attacks like the one I said, which went with the name Capital One, or any other attacks, because when I'm talking about cloud, it is combination of multiple things, multiple technologies in terms of, you know, you cannot make a cloud without a web interface or without a web application, because at the end of the day, you want to access it. So web app is one of the component. You need all that network connectivity, right even uh, you know to access it over the internet that is one sort of it or even for any internal communication that is another bit of it so network is also a part of it virtualization being another part of it and operating system being another part of it right so these four major things you know individually these are four major areas right these are four major areas of research all by itself you combine all of them and then we are talking in terms of cloud right so every you you have to make sure that you get past all the vulnerabilities individually for these technologies in terms of network security in terms of application security in terms of you know any os based security in terms of any of these securities about any of these technologies right now when we talk about this we have more things rolling into aws now we have containers now a lot of a lot of you people uh, you know must be having a pretty decent idea about what container is so that is again uh, one of the integral part that comes with aws we talk about container image security we talk about workload security we talk about all the files that are being stored in the server their security now the whole security acronym like i told you guys some security comes there with design for that particular cloud and some security is to be maintained by the customer themselves so if you are the customer you have to maintain your share of security and aws will maintain its own fair share of security right so that's why in order to get a good idea of that we have something which we call as share security responsibility model right so when we talk in terms of that so let's say if i'm talking in terms of aws aws will maintain some sort of security for you now since it's it's a service which is accessible over the internet right so anything which is accessible over the internet it is very much vulnerable or very susceptible to attacks like dos attack right if i give you a figure uh recently uh you know almost if you guys go back around seven to eight eight months you guys uh, might have heard a uh, news which was talking in terms of that there was a massive dos attack on aws right a uh, cool part was that the dos attack is massive enough uh, the it was like pentabytes of data being sent to aws and the cooler part was that aws was able to absorb all that data coming into it right so it was susceptible to that big of a dos attack coming towards itself right so aws gives you a service which is known as shield right which is specifically for any dns based request coming in right so it prevents you from any of these dos attacks or ddos attacks or you know dr dos attacks any of these denial of service attacks that are coming towards you it's aws's responsibility that that it takes in order to prevent you from that anything which is in terms of compute where you call for a machine in terms of a storage where you are keeping your data in terms of networking right all these things fall under aws for security region and that's why you might notice when you will call for any instance or for let's say for any ec2 instance on aws it will specifically ask you what sort of access do you want to allow to this particular instance so if you want to ssh into that instance you can only allow ssh based traffic right something which we use for doing this is known as a security group in aws right so we talk about security groups we talk about all these whitelisting that can be done in the security groups for whatever service you have to use right again that is a mix of customer and aws's responsibility being a customer you cannot just allow every traffic coming into your resource on aws and then you can complain to aws that you know my system got hacked and the reason is because it was aws's responsibility it's not like that so both have to take care of their own fair share of security if you are putting some data into a s3 bucket it's your responsibility to make sure that bucket is not public it's your responsibility to make sure uh, you know you are encrypting the data whatever you are putting in the bucket right from that perspective fine 
Then we have operating systems. If you are setting up your own internal network, you should have a firewall in there. You should, if you are running a web app, you should have a WAF in there. If you are talking about who can log in and you know, if that is a pretty fair share of password that you are using, which most of the people, uh, we, we simply ran a campaign back and you know, inside our organization, we figured out most of the people are using password like summer at the rate 2020, winter at the rate 2020, spring at the rate 2020. So these, these are like a pretty fair share of common password that a lot of people they use, right? So it's not about using a common password. It's about adding an extra layer of security there. So why don't you guys go ahead and add an MFA to it, right? So even if someone guesses your password, now you have another layer of security in there and AWS allows you to do that, right? As a part of customer's responsibility, they can give you services. How you are going to use them will define how, you know, how much or how many of the, those security services you want to use. Now, there are, uh, when we talk in terms of cloud again, we have a few things that you guys should actually know in terms of security. The very first one is authentication. So in terms of cloud side authentication, it gives you identity-based authentication where you can use multi-factors, where you can use all those, uh, you know, message digest in order to authenticate yourself. Then it also gives you context-based authentication, which is like a cloud-based biometric service. There is, there is one of the vendor. It's actually a third-party vendor uh, for which you can get services in AWS. It's with the name Nomi, uh, Nomidio, right? What it does, it delivers a biometric identity service with AWS. So if you guys really want to go ahead and you want to explore it at all, it's all yours, right? You can go ahead and you can try and explore it, but that is one of the very decent uh, biometric service that I have seen so far, right? So this is in terms of authentication for a cloud. The next important thing is in terms of encryption. So encryption plays a very decent role, right? And very decent role when I say it is in terms of, um, you know, like, like I, like I'm focusing from the very beginning data in transit should be encrypted. That means any data that you are sending from A to B, it must be sent over TLS or SSL right, which is supposed to be a secure way of sending your data across. Whenever you are storing your data at any place, whether it is client side, whether it is server side, your data should always be encrypted even at rest, right? So when I use the term encryption at rest, I simply means wherever your data stays, whether it is in your system or whether it is in a S3 bucket, your data should stay encrypted in both the sites. AWS is very flexible with it, right? And even as a part of its exam for a security speciality, it gives you a pretty decent share of questions out of this bit as well, right? Where it asks you that what sort of encryption mechanism uh, you know are provided in terms of AWS or so what you can do, you can either encrypt your data, uh, you know, on-prem and then you can upload that encrypted data on AWS or you can make sure that your data is encrypted in transit and once it reaches a bucket, you can encrypt it there. It gives you multiple uh, sort of encryptions in terms of, you know, AES-256. It helps you with, uh, it have RSA, it supports elliptic curve, it have Diffie-Hellman. So it gives you various different encryption in terms of symmetric as well as asymmetric encryption algorithm. If you, if you go like a year back, it was not supporting asymmetric encryption. But now, if we talk in terms of December 2020, yes, we do have asymmetric encryption support in AWS as well. Now, setting up this whole infrastructure, talking about, you know, how good of an encryption do I have? I have used all sort of authentications. You know, I have a pretty robust security mechanism. All that is there on the paper until unless you actually verify it, right? So there is one more very crucial step that comes into the picture, which talks about vulnerability assessment and penetration testing, right? Now, what AWS does, AWS have its own guideline of what you can actually test and what should actually be excluded out of any of your tests that you are doing on AWS, right? So there are things like port scanning, there are things like uh, DNS zone walking, which are actually prohibited by AWS itself, because when you are doing that, you're not just doing it on your environment, 
you should know that you are using a pretty, uh, you know, a shared environment where a lot of people might have their resources as well, right? So uh, it gives or it allows you to do vulnerability assessment and penetration testing. Again, there is one more service in AWS itself, which goes by with the name inspector, right? That is very decent service, which which actually does a vulnerability assessment for you, right? So if you have like 10, 20 instance of server running on your uh, infrastructure, uh, you don't have to go out. You don't have to buy a third party tool for it. AWS have its own tool, which can actually do assessment for all your services. It's not just in terms of instances. We have trusted advisor. We have security hub, you know, other sort of services as well inside AWS, which keeps giving you multiple things in terms of your whole AWS. AWS security structure right now pen testing in AWS is sort of uh, one of one of the fancy things right now of NC talks right now in the market. So there are a lot of organization who are also providing it as a service now and it is one of uh, you know the niche way of doing testing. There are a lot of good tools out there. If you guys want to give it a research there are uh, you know you can scan a particular AWS environment using Nessus. You can you know go ahead and you can test or you can exploit uh, the environment using one other tool which goes by with the name Paco P A C U right that is also one of the tools which is available out there in the market for doing a pen test on your AWS environment and then there are multiple different scripts that are out there right so you can go to github you can explore your way there you will find n number of scripts in there where using which you can actually test your own environment the one which you have created the one which you are uh, you know you want to maintain the security for or you know one thing is that if you want to check your own security posture you can do a vulnerable assessment and a pen test if you want to stick to a particular compliance you can go ahead you can do a vulnerability assessment and a pen test right so that is uh, one of the way you can actually go ahead and go out there just to address the question by Omkar Paco is one of the free tools it is available on github you can download it and you can start playing around with it even now and there are no charges to it right it's open source basically cool so doing assessment is one part of it once you are done with all these things you also want to make sure that you have a robust monitoring right so because whenever you follow this whole process of uh, you know vulnerability management where you go ahead and you go with all these things you always end up with doing a constant monitoring because constant monitoring is something which helps you to maintain your security posture right now so uh, what we have we have things like cloud trail we have things like cloud watch which uh, you know allows you to collect all those different logs from those multiple sources in one single place and you can actually go ahead and you can do all your comparison in there and you can you know point out any of those malicious activities or any of those things which have been flagged and you can go ahead and you can fix it in your own environment right now we we have just now looked into a couple of things in terms of authentication in terms of encryption in terms of vulnerability assessments in terms of monitoring right when we talk or when i talk specifically in terms of aws certified security speciality it focuses on five major domains right first of that domain being identity and access management where we talk in terms of you know how how you should be able to manage all the users who are logging in you should have mfas you should have all those controls in place that is in terms of identity and access management it goes with a pretty fair share of uh, your exam based things so this module gives you almost around 20 percent of your exam based questions right so if i talk about iam you get around 20 percent of the questions during your exam from iam only Right then uh, second module is detective uh, control. Now when I say detective control, I'm actually talking in terms of logging and monitoring because that is one of the way how I actually go ahead and detect things, right? So all the services uh, when I talk in terms of a cloud trail, when I talk in terms of AWS config, I talk in terms of AWS trusted advisor, all these services, they fall under logging and monitoring or your detective control. Right, your detective control or your logging and monitoring module almost have again around 20% of the share in whatever you see during your exam. So that is again 
a pretty much fair share over there then we have whole infrastructure as a security so whenever the word infrastructure comes into the picture the very first thing that comes into my mind is the network right how exactly the network is structured in aws the network part is taken care by amazon vpc right which is virtual private cloud so amazon vpc is taking care of the network then we have wafs right which are web application firewall we have aws system managers taking care of your infrastructure so all those things will fall under infrastructure security and infrastructure security holds the very big share of your exam question you almost get around 26% of your exam questions out of infrastructure security next module is data protection now this is the module where you know we actually talk in terms of encryption and all those things right and encryption via kms encryption via hsm devices or hsm is basically your hardware security module so either you can use kms or you can use your own hsm or you can get yourself an hsm on aws it is very flexible with how with how exactly you want to use all those data protection services and it holds almost around 22% of your exam share and then at the last we talk about incident response incident responses like you know once you hit a particular incident how exactly are you going to play around with it right so things like amazon sorry aws cloud trail aws cloud watch amazon sns these are the things which actually go ahead and help you out with your incident response process and it holds almost around 19% of your exam share right so this is like uh, you know the whole or how exactly this whole aws certified security speciality exam looks to you guys giving you a bit idea into what all different services we have inside these modules so in terms of identity and access management we talk a lot in terms of iam which is aws iam talking about how to set up multi factors and all those things we talk about the aws directory services in terms of how you can communicate aws organizations which allows you to create your own structure within aws a secure one then we have detective control the one which i said in terms of logging and monitoring we have cloud trail we have config we have trusted advisor right then we have infrastructure protection in terms of vpcs wafs and system managers we have data protection using kms using hsm now out here they have shown aws hsm but you can also go ahead and you can bring your own device so basically you can have your on prem hsm communicating with aws and then in terms of incident response we have cloud trail sns and cloud watch as a service now as a part of this exam this whole exam focuses more on different services that aws provides in terms of security right so you know when you, when you go through the curricula when you go through this whole structure for aws uh, you know you have to make sure that you go through all the services that are there in aws so that you can actually talk in terms of how you can use those services to strengthen your security posture right now uh, that is why here at infosec train we we run by a course where we have actually combined two of the aws courses which is one of one of our courses is uh, aws certified architect associate where you get an idea of all those services which are running on aws and then we have security speciality where you actually talk in terms of how security comes into the picture and how you can use those services in order to get yourself a secure environment a secure infrastructure and how you can secure your data whatever you have in your aws fine then guys thanks a lot for joining today and see you guys around stay safe stay healthy cheers guys take care